What? Oh my goodness. Dude, see when people see this. Yeah, yeah, I was like able to catch you up so quickly. It's like I just flicked and stopped on you. Oh my, I did again. Exact same thing. How did I do that? No, it isn't some form of hack or auto-aim. The new update to Aim Assist in Battlefield 2042 has played a big part in how I'm able to do this on console. Why did this update come about? Well, Aim Assist in Battlefield 2042, to put it simply, was broken. In many instances, it did opposite to what it was supposed to do. Check out a video I did it on previously, it is linked above and will help you fully understand how broken it was. It actually kept you off target and acted like a protective barrier around players. DICE have been trying to fix this for several months to no success. And at the end of June, Julian from Ripple Effect, aka DICELA, messaged me on Twitter to say he'd seen my video and acknowledged that something was very wrong here. Julian goes on to say that he was going to look into it to see if he could help sort it out even though he no longer worked in this area of the game. Julian helped write the original Battlefield aim assist code, but his role was now all portal related. He said the code that powered the Battlefield 2042 aim assist should be the same as the previous Battlefield games. This includes Battlefield 4, Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 5. There may be data tweaks here and there, but everything including the tracking should be the same. But what I showed just did not look right, and some tweak could not do this. Something was literally broken. A few weeks later, a community manager posted on Reddit that the issue had been found, repaired, and that it would be included in the next update. I went back to Julian and asked if he was responsible. He said he was. He found the issue, fixed it, and said it would be released as part of the 1.2 update we now have. Someone had added code that broke the tracking, which resulted in it continuously turning on and off again. So here we are with the new aim assist. Before I show you any of this, please keep in mind throughout I know how to fully use aim assist to my advantage. I understand it and I know exactly what it does and I'm also a pretty good player too. That combination of things means what you will see here, particularly in the final few examples, most may not be able to do this as well as me. I'm going to replicate the same test I did back with the old aim assist. Snap aim is set to 0%, we are not testing that today, it always worked the way it was meant to. I don't play with it on either, I'm going to up the aim assist setting from my normal 50% to 100%. 50% is what I recommend in my previous video as a means to counteract the issues we were getting with aim assist at the time. And it's also what I normally play with too. This aim assist is made up of a slowdown element to slow down your crosshair when on a target to give you more control, and a tracking element that helps you follow them with less input compared to normal stick movement. In this first example, watch as I am perfectly able to track the player as they are running back and forward. I'm still putting input into the right stick, but tracking is helping me stay on target. Previously my aim could only follow slightly behind them as they were running, particularly when the player was running across and away from you. You can see here in the side by side comparison, you really had to force your aim onto them to break through that aim assist bubble. It was so broken, it was like two positive ends of a magnet that pushed each other away. In the first test I was simply trying to keep my aim on them at all times. In the next one I wanted to see how quickly I could acquire them by letting them sprint away from my crosshair. I was able to catch up and track them quicker than I was expecting to. In the third test, the one you've seen at the very start, I wanted to take this to an extreme level. I was waiting until the player was pretty much outside of my 90 field of view before trying to flick to them. This is all my movement. I am not being assisted here with this flick. It is not snapping. I am trying to move my crosshair as fast as I can as I aim down sight until I feel that slowdown effect kick in. Then I know I am on a player. Even though my eyes may not have properly adjusted to seeing them yet because of the motion blur, I know I am on this player. This is the part where I'm now being assisted, first via slowdown and then the tracking to follow them. I find it impossible to over aim and the next example perfectly highlights this. Those on my Twitter will have seen this one already. I am able to get on target every single time. No over or under aiming, no micro adjustments needed. As I said previously, bear in mind I am already a very good player without aim assist. I have pretty much played this game for a year in crossplay lobbies versus PC players without it. I can flick pretty well without aim assist and I've gotten better as time has gone on. You kind of have to up your game a little bit versus PC players, you know? But could I do it with this level of consistency? No way. Not a chance. Another thing to bear in mind is my perception of this. I am finding it very strong as you can probably tell. Is this because it is super strong, or is it because it was so broken before and now it's working, it's a huge change? Is it actually any stronger or weaker compared to past Battlefield games? 
Julian said to me that it is exactly the same in assist. There should not be any difference. If anything, it should be a little bit weaker because of the running speed of players. He did say to me though, even though players are faster in Battlefield 2042, the tracking should still work as normal. He also goes on to mention even more that more changes are in the works to improve upon it too. I'm going to finish with a real game example here because I'm sure some of you out there are thinking, but can he replicate this in a real game? Well, watch this and pay close attention. As I am being shot in the back, I slide and rotate until I feel the slowdown. But I stop here for a split second before making a small adjustment to a visible player. Why did I stop here? Well, I thought I felt the slowdown. Was I wrong? No, I wasn't. There were two players. You may not see it, but a small part of a player must still be visible here, because I feel slowdown here. They pop up and become more visible after I had adjusted to the other player. They pop up exactly where I had previously stopped. But as you can see here, I did a complete 180 and got right on where a player was. This here was probably even harder to do compared to what I did in testing. So I think it is pretty clear, they have made big improvements to aim assist in Battlefield 2042. It does seem to be working better than what it did before and it is working as intended, despite what you may think about it. I hear a lot of people saying they feel no difference, it is just as bad, it doesn't work. Well in my next video I'm going to show the different types of aim assist and why you shouldn't really pay attention to their naming. What Call of Duty calls auto rotation and what auto rotation is in Battlefield, now called snapping by the way, are two different things. Do not assume because they are called the same that they work the same and I think this is where a lot of confusion comes about. Then I will show you in another video how best to use aim assist to your advantage because many simply are not using it correctly. That's likely why so many out there are not feeling it working for them. Thanks for watching folks, a big thank you to Ollie and Scooter for helping me record some examples for this video and also a big thank you to all the channel members who support the channel financially as well. If you enjoyed, please drop a like and a subscription to the channel, it's completely free, comment below on your own thoughts on the changes and I'll see you all again in more Aim Assist videos. Take care all.